Stefan Romano MMA Nate here in Melbourne, Australia for UFC 234 and I'm here with UFC welterweight Michael Chiesa. How's the welterweight life treating you? Welterweight life's treating me good. A lot of good food around here so I'm able to indulge a little bit. Guilt free, which is nice and uh, super excited for my teammate Austin's fight. It's cool to be here to, to support my teammate and uh, get, a, get a visit in a new city, put a new stamp on my passport and uh, you know, I love Australia. It's good to be here. So your last fight out, you defeated the uh, legend Carlos Condit. Um, how did that fight play out as you expected? And how does it feel to have such a huge victory on your resume, first fight in welterweight in the UFC? You know, it's hard to say that you predict to go out and beat a guy like Carlos in the way that I did. Um, you know, I was expected to go into very deep waters, as we've seen Carlos many times in his career, have some very crazy, tough, strenuous fights. You know, so I was ready to have a war with him if need be. Um, I definitely envisioned myself getting my hand, getting my hand raised regardless. Um, you know, but it's an honor to fight a guy like that. Whether whether the result went my way or not, I can honestly say that when my time comes and I hang the gloves up, I can say that I got to fight somebody that's genuinely one of my one of my heroes. You know, one of my heroes in the sport. Um, you know, so it, it was an honor to share the octagon with him, and uh, you know, definitely, definitely the biggest win in my career. And do you have a name in mind, or maybe a date for a comeback? Well, I got a little procedure I got to take care of. Don't want to say too much about it, um, but I think that's going to set me back till probably late May, early June uh, at the soonest. But um, once I get home from Australia, I'm going to be getting it addressed down in Las Vegas, get the procedure done, and you know, I'll be be back on my feet in about six to eight weeks. But um, yeah, super excited. A lot of lot of new blood at welterweight. A lot of new, you know. I, I fought at 155 for so long. I just I, I had all those guys in my in my in my sights for so long, and now it's like a lot of new blood, a lot of new faces to me, and uh, a lot of good challenges. And I'm, I'm super excited for what's ahead. So how how have you changed up your diet and your training for 170? Is it basically just the same, just no grueling weight cut, or did you change it up a little bit? It's a little bit similar. You know, the difference is is now I still I, I had such an easy cut to 170 and I spent a lot of time bulking up until that fight. I was on a very hard 12 week lifting program before I started my eight week camp and I really, physiologically, I could see a lot of changes in my body. I put on some mass um, and it's the best I felt. You know, so I feel like I can still bulk up a little more, still put on a little mass. I don't want to make these weight cuts hard for me, but you know, there are big guys at 170. You got the Kamara Usmans, the Darren Tills, these guys that are very big and physically imposing. I got to be able to match their strength. So definitely want to still, with, with, the, with the strength programs when you're trying to build, comes a lot of eating, as long as you're eating right. You know, it's a very strict diet I was on, so I'll go back to that. Um, yeah, but you know, it's just, uh, I don't get as many cravings to eat bad food. It's, when you have to cut a ton of weight, you kind of crave everything crappy under the sun. But whereas now, it's I don't really have that problem anymore. So I'm in the right place. So you're here for your teammate, Austin Arnett. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about his fight? How's it going to play out? Well, oh, shoot. I did not mean to. Yeah, sorry about that. Stepping on some guy's bag. Um, for one, Austin's been super active. This is his fourth fight in a year and a few days. Just in, in just over a year, he's had four fights. So he's super active. He's super sharp. Um, you know, he hasn't, it, which, which is good to not have the big time in between fights, is he doesn't have to get his timing and his rhythm back, so he can just kind of hit the ground running these last two camps. Uh, I think he's gonna have a big speed advantage. Austin's very agile, and I think that. You know, it takes time before you can fully showcase your skills when you compete. You know, it's it's a it's a lot easier said than done. Um, but I just see him being the faster, better athlete in there, and I, I, you know, I see him getting a KO. And I think that uh, I don't want to say the punch because I don't want this to to go on the internet and have him hear about it. But I think he's got a he's got a little something coming. I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. So I'm super excited to see how it plays out. All right, don't miss UFC 234 from Melbourne, Australia. Mike, thank you for the interview and I hope to see you in the Octagon soon. Yes, sir. Thanks for the time. Thank you, sir. Yep.